tells us that the longest tug of war ever held, two hours and 41 minutes, between H Company and E Company of the 2nd Battalion of the Sherwood Foresters in Jubilee, India, August 12, 1889, E Company won it. Eight-man teams had tug of war in the Olympic Games, 1920 Antwerp, Belgium, Britain won a gold, Denmark a silver, and Belgium a bronze. Tug of War is an old Hawaiian game, actually called Hookie Hookie, a long time ago. But the setting then was certainly not like it is today, and the contestants were not quite the Pittsburgh Steelers and Cincinnati Reds. And for the seven Steelers, here's the way they'll pull from the front. Up front, closest to that line of decision, it's Rocky Blyer running back. Right behind Rocky, you have Jerry Mullins, offensive lineman. And then linebacker, Jack Ham. Lynn Swan is in the middle. I don't know what he's doing there, but he's there anyway. Move on back here to some more muscle. Here's Mel Blunt. And the captain, Andy Russell. Andy, I know you're concerned about the fellas keeping their legs under them. Yeah, I think it's very important. If, you're, if you lay out prone, you have no strength, Keith. You're just into your arms. You know, your arms don't have that much strength versus the baseball players. So we've got to try and keep our feet underneath us. And the anchor man for the Pittsburgh Steelers, who's got himself dug in pretty well, 255 pounds of him, John Cole. John, if they pull you out of that hole, it'll be like pulling a tree out by the roots. <laughs> well, I got uh, six teammates who'd be pretty upset if they do. So right. <laughs> Now, here's the uh, working order for the Cincinnati Reds. We've got seven Cincinnati Reds. And leading off for Cincinnati will be left fielder George Foster. Backing him up will be outfielder Merv Rettman. And in the third spot, and usually leading off, is left fielder Pete Rose and the Sportsman of the Year. You guys have had the same amount of men. They're supposed to outweigh you. Well, the funny thing about that, they got one guy who weighs 255, too, but they put Blunt and they put uh, Glenn Swan in there, and they got it right at 1,500 pounds. We thought we'd have a man advantage, but uh, we're the same with about 70 pounds disadvantage. So it's going to be tough to do. we got to work on it. I think you can do it, though, Pete. Next in line, we've got left-hander Don Gullett. We get back to the speedster in the crowd and Ken Griffey. Tony Perez providing all the muscle he can possibly provide. And man, it drives in all the runs for that ball club. So you're used to being in that position, being under pressure, Tony. And my man back here, eating up the rope, all bandaged up, all clothed up, and praying or talking or doing something. Are you that far off already? I got a bad tooth. And if they yank as hard as I think they're going to, <laughs> I'm going to get some use out of this. <laughs> you look like you got a hole dug up here all the way halfway to China, John. I'm just, you know, maybe coming out skiing. These guys, uh, you know, what are you going to do? Are you, We've come down to this thing. I thought we could won it last uh, last outing, and we didn't uh, play well at all in the in the boats. And now we just got to hump it up a little bit. Tony said, "Ah, we made enough money. I don't think he's going to give up though. When it comes time, we're going to be yanking our heads off." But they've been here before, and it's a, it's going to be a rough trip. I'm just psyching myself up a little bit. You're used to it, buddy. Better look around for a couple of concrete blocks too, John. 1,500 pounds exactly for the seven men who make up the Steeler tug of war team. 14.30 for Cincinnati, Lord James Blears will start him. Oh, Pittsburgh immediately jerks that white flag all the way to the edge of the water pit. Here comes the other flag. It's near the line. It is. It's over. I don't believe it. 9.83 seconds. That's all it took. Hey. 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 Oh. I don't think he had this much whooping and hollering in that, in that other big one. Uh, well, you know, this is you know, more exciting because that's our business, you know, and there you, you really uh, plan on doing, being doing good, but this was incredible. I never anticipated such a quick win. You know, well, we got it going and they couldn't stop you. Well, we went to a great pains to get seven guys. You know, we've always gone with six and we wanted to get seven guys. The theory being that two little guys are better than one big guy. So we made that change and it really helped us, Keith. Well, Reggie, what is it like on the other end of the rope? You big dude, you, I thought you were halfway down in the ground and they pulled you out like they were pulling weeds. Gosh, they, they cut Sid. I tell you, I never, I, have this, I hadn't got to surf yet here in Hawaii. 
I felt like it just then, if I ever felt like it. I, I was, you know, I was just useless. I tried to get down. As soon as I got down to go lean back, it was just, we were gone. I mean, it's obvious. I think you can see it on instant replay. <laughs> instant replay won't last that long, though. Well, it may be longer than the event that we just had. You might have to run it about 12 times. Won't you hold off on it or maybe run uh, reruns of uh, 1937 World Series or something? <laughs> run it back in slow motion. We might be able to get about 10 seconds out of that. Joe? You had your guys set up, you had them how you thought you were going to be, you ran into a rough time into the boat race, and now the tug of war. Well, I think the boat race was our downfall. We didn't keep the boat straight. I didn't personally, and uh, we didn't beat them in a boat race. I think, uh, you know, we're at a disadvantage, of course, in the rope pull because we had seven guys, they had seven, they got 1,500 pounds, and we're only at 1,430. We're at a disadvantage, but our guys gave it all, and that's, you know, that's all we can do. You know, they did the best they could do. And in case you missed it, folks, here's how it happened. 9.83 seconds, and it was over. And the Pittsburgh Steelers are the Super Teams champions of 1976. The Steelers win a total of $139,000. That's $13,900 per man. The Cincinnati Reds, $113,000, or $11,300 per man. We'll be back to wrap it up in a moment. Minutes ago, this little puddle of water was a scene of a great moment of drama. It didn't last very long, but now that it's over, it's just sort of a little old mud hole, but a very expensive one. About $28,000 worth of water right there, so <laughs> let's tread lightly. <laughs> <laughs> and guess who lost? Yeah, yeah, I know. I was trying to do everything I could for those baseball players, cheating for them, trying to dig up holes for them, giving them good interviews, getting them psyched up, patting them on the back, and even standing on their side and giving interviews and introductions and everything else, but to no avail. I guess this isn't the year for the Oakland A's, is it? <laughs> no, no, but the Pittsburgh Steelers have proven themselves formidable in other circumstances as well, and they delivered when they had to. Well, absolutely. You got two teams that are used to being under pressure, but, you know, the big strong guys here wrapped it up and punched our guys out, I guess. <laughs> right, Reg, thanks for your help. <laughs> Thank you, Keith. That's the story of Super Teams for 1976 from Hawaii. Preceding a presentation of ABC Sports.